we have learned so far about the uh, isentropic change uh, and apply the concept of the isentropic change of ideal gas to address the velocity uh, through a nozzle uh, isentropic uh, flow through a nozzle so that uh, flow is only applicable at a, a very short distance of pipe where actually the condition can where the, the friction can be ignored so when the the so it is it is a, a converging diverging nozzle as such that the friction can be can be ignored but in the reality you you will always have these frictions okay that's why uh, uh, from this point forward we'll try to discuss uh, more realistic flow through a conduit. We'll start first with the concept of the adiabatic uh, flow. So, what is the uh, adiabatic flow with friction? So, uh, here you you see this is a reservoir, a uh, continuation of the concept we have learned before. We have reservoir. So the the leak, sorry, the fluid flow, the gas flow from the reservoir through this nozzle. Okay, that's why uh, this is a uh, converging diverging nozzle so that's why the friction here is very low so we can ignore the uh, heat loss here but when the fluid flow next through a, a long pipe uh, or a long conduit uh, you might not uh, neglect the friction here okay so in uh, adiabatic flow, we know that the, the definition of adiabatic is there is no heat that go in or out through the system. So we know that uh, it occurs when gas flow through a very high velocity, the velocity is so high. Uh, the other thing is that to be able to make sure there is no heat transfer to the system, uh, from the system to the, to the surroundings, the pipe must be well insulated and the flow is so fast as such the heat transfer from inside here to outside here can be negligible uh, so now what happens if you have friction okay the friction uh, will lead to the entropy uh, of gas uh, of, of the gas so uh, as the liquid flow from this point to another point here the entropy of the gas increases that's why we cannot apply the uh, is entropic equation uh, so uh, what we can we can apply uh, this is a quite uh, mathematic centric uh, kind of concept so uh, we look into the flow system here at point uh, at this point and at this point uh, and we try to build a relationship between the condition of a point here and point of that okay we have a P in the beginning temperature uh, velocity and we have a density in another point here we have uh, uh, the same pressure as the one before plus any change can be positive can be negative of course in this case it will be negative uh, it will have less pressure uh, we have a temperature plus any change of the temperature and uh, you have a velocity uh, with any change uh, of the velocity plus any change of the velocity there and density plus change of density then we apply a relevant equation uh, to the problem there uh, first of all we can uh, apply the momentum balance equation there uh, then uh, a continuity equation uh, then we apply the energy balance between the two systems over there then we implement the equation of state and then also uh, the division of mesh number and remember in this flow we have a friction so there is a wall shear stress over there and it can be expressed using the friction factor that we have learned uh, before uh, we will end up with a set of uh, equation there with unknown dp unknown dt d rho dv and tma and all of these equation then uh, can be solved simultaneously so if you do it right, uh, you can try here, it will be quite an exercise, uh, you will end up with this equation, okay? Uh, for the circular pipe and, and for the pipe at a constant diameter, we can link between the friction there, F, 
this is uh, uh, in uh, in some books it is symbolized as n this term link that one uh, this equation basically link what will be your the, the the what will be the mesh number what will be the velocity at point here to point here let's say this is a point one this is a point two what will be the mesh number at a correlation between a mesh number and mesh number here uh, uh, when you have uh, a friction coefficient of f here and then given that the pipe has diameter of d and the distance between point 0.1 and point 0.2, point 0.2 is equal to uh, uh, delta x here. Uh, so another another way of seeing the equation is this equation uh, describe what will be the change of the velocity or for the length of the pipe, given that you know what will be the uh, friction coefficient of the flow through that kind of pipe. Okay, uh, when the friction involved, uh, flow tend to reach a sonic condition. So, uh, uh, mesh number at point 2 there tend to reach 1. Okay, uh, and then the point where the, the velocity reach 1, we call as the maximum length, also called as a critical length L there. So, uh, this equation then is simply uh, uh, then can be simplified by by substituting m a two here equal to one, so you can uh, end up with uh, this equation. I make some uh, basic illustration of the adiabatic flow here. So you may imagine you have uh, a mesh number here. Uh, you have a certain value across the delta x. Okay, you can have. Uh, at any point here, you can have a uh, mesh number equal to 2, uh, sorry, mesh number of a point 2, point 2 can be any point of there, and you will have uh, a point somewhere of the length of the pipe, which is equal to the critical length, where uh, the gas has a mesh number equal to 1. So that's what does it mean. So this correlation link between uh, uh, the gas velocity at point 1 to any point at 2, and this equation link between uh, this point and this critical point. Uh, the same as for the isentropic flow, you can also have uh, the parameter relationship. You can have the parameter uh, that link between point 0.1 and 2, that link the pressure of point 0.1 and 2, the equation that link uh, between temperature at point 0.1 and temperature at point 0.2, also the density at point 0.1 and density of point 0.2. This is basically the equation uh, that describes uh, the adiabatic flow uh, with the friction. Another, another type of flow is isothermal flow, also with the friction. So, so this is an uh, illustration of the flow itself. Um, it occurs in a long, uh, small and uninsulated pipe. So basically the pipe allows transmission of heat to keep the temperature constant. Uh, this, uh, the equation with the flow of here and the uh, isothermal assumption is applied when calculating the uh, piping of natural gas. Uh, uh, why it is, it can be uh, applied? Because natural gas piping is normally buried under the ground at uh, almost constant temperature uh, or under a very small change of the temperature. So, to derive the equation, it is the same as the one before. So, we set a system uh, at point 1 and point 2 here. When the fluid enters the system, it starts with a condition of uh, pressure, velocity, and density. And when it exits the system, it ends up with the uh, pressure plus any change of pressure uh, for velocity plus any change of volumes and density plus any change of the density. Uh, also, uh, remember that when uh, in this condition, we have friction, so we have a friction at uh, opposite direction over there. So what we do is we apply the mass balance and momentum equation, and we apply the ideal gas law. We end up with this equation. Uh, since since this change uh, for the long pipelines, uh, p uh, rho v d v is uh, negligible, so this one can be cancelled from the equation. You end up with this equation. 
uh, and then from the continu continuity equation and from the density uh, relationship of ideal gas uh, we can uh, combine this above equation to get uh, this form and you can then rearrange that one to find out that PDP equal to this term by integrating from point 1 to point 2 and then rearrange it we end up with this ex expression and then when we use a circular, circular, circular pipe we can uh, replace the area here with the area of a pipe uh, we end up with, with this equation uh, the term uh, f of that can be uh, estimated using the y mod equation uh, in the equation here you need to remember that d is in the unit of of inch uh, 